Mm -hmm. Well, good morning, Homestead family. Today we want to talk a little bit about stepping up some of our seedlings, getting them ready to transplant. We'll be right back. <music> Well, welcome back, friends. I've had a lot of uh, subscribers asking me uh, to please explain what I mean when I say to step up your seedling or pot up your seedling. seedling. Uh, they have saw me do this on a couple of our videos, and, uh, and they were very curious about just what in the world am I talking about. <laughs> but uh, don't let stepping up a, a seedling uh, scare you. There's nothing really complicated about it. It simply means you're just transplanting a small seedling that you've started in a seed starting cup into a larger container. And there's a, a couple of reasons that I do that. I would like to point out that the vast majority of the time when I start my seedlings in my uh, seed starting trays like this, I can take this this seedling, when it's ready to transplant, I can transplant it directly into a container that it can spend the rest of its life cycle in the container. And oftentimes I'll transplant it straight out into the earth bed, right into the ground, and we'll go from there. <clears throat> now there are times when um, uh, I, I do elect to uh, step up or pot up step up is what I've always called it. I step up some of these small seedlings and um, one of the reasons is it's, it's an opportunity to rescue some leggy seedlings. You'll get a little seedling like this that, as you can see he's pretty leggy, he's pretty tall and skinny, he, he's uh, probably used up all the nutrients he's going to get out of this little container so this would be a candidate that I would take and step up into a little bit larger container such as this okay and the way I do that is very simple let's talk about the um, the different sizes and then we'll, we'll actually demonstrate one um, I use a seed starting mix uh, in my uh, seed starting trays. It's really, you know, peat and vermiculite. You can buy a seed starting mix at your local um, nursery, retail nursery, but it, it does start to get a little pricey, especially nowadays the way the economy is. But um, what I've done over the years is I try to start my seeds in as small of a cup as I can, which is this one. There are smaller, but this is the one that works well for me. I don't put any fertilizer in here and I don't fertilize my, my seedling starts. This is what I start them in. And it takes a minimal amount of the um, uh, seed starting mix. Now when I get ready to step that one up, I can um, go to a larger container and if it's going to be a seedling that all I'm going to do is step it up to try to rescue it from being leggy, I'm going to use the same uh, seed starting mix in the little larger container. I'm not going to fertilize it, I'm just going to add more of the uh, seed starting mix in a bigger container and I'll put it from here over here. A lot of people say, well why don't you just start it in here? Well. Right at first, when you're trying to get these seeds started, uh, you put it in a big container. What happens is a lot of the times we overwater the container. It's huge for a little tiny seed and it overwhelms the seed. A lot of times we root rot the seed, we get a poor germination rate. I have found the smaller these cells, the easier and better my germination rate is. So I start off with a smaller one and I'll step it up right directly into the garden or a container or if I have to because of a leggy situation because it didn't get enough light then I'll take it out of here and put it into a bigger container where it's got more nutrients and um, it can try to um, improve that legginess because I can simply plant it a little bit deeper than it is here. Okay so that's our chance to rescue a leggy seedling. Another reason that I would step up my plants, um, you'll notice that if you get a, a seedling that's starting to get a fairly good size like these, 
these are getting pretty good size now. Uh, what will happen is you'll come out and you're, you notice that the uh, seed starting mix seems to be dry. When you, when you watered it well the, the day before, early in the morning, you came out the next morning, and the seed starting mix is, seems to be very dried out. The reason for that is, is these, um, these little plants are developing some pretty good root systems at this point. Well, that one didn't do too good, but it's, it, the seed, um, the roots are developing so fast that it overcomes the small cell that it's in, and um, it's, it, it soaks up, drinks up all the water that I put in that small cell, so it doesn't last day to day. So that's why you would want to go to a bigger one, because now you can get a little bit more water available to that plant. It gives it more nutrients because you most likely have used up all the nutrients that were in that small cup. Because remember, the vermiculite and the peat really don't provide very much at all. Peat provides zero. So what you're going to get is just a little bit off of the vermiculite and not much of that. So, <coughs> excuse me. By adding the uh, seed mix in a bigger container, that gives us a little bit more water available and a little bit more nutrients and it keeps our plant from drying out. Another sign that you can see that uh, tells you that you need to uh, step up your plant or plant it out in a garden is if you look at the bottom of the seed cells you'll see roots growing out of the bottom out into your 1020 trays. If you see that that plant is root bound. It's, it's full of roots in here. The roots can go no further. And what you need to do is get them out of those small uh, container and get them into a, a larger container so those roots can further develop and the plant can, and can um, for, uh, further mature. Now there's some benefits to all of this. Um, first of all, let me show you these different sizes. Here's the size that I normally plant with, and you can see that it's not very sh big, and it doesn't take a whole lot of seed mix to, to, um, uh, to fill it up. Now the next size up that I often use is this one here. It's got a little bit deeper cell. It helps me to uh, get a little bit more um, container mix, in, uh, seed starting mix in here, and I can, I can stretch out that grow period while that little seedling is developing roots and I can get a, a little bit bigger root system on it. This is another one that I step up to. It's a small cup. You'll see these very often in, the, uh, in your uh, local nurseries. This is a, a good size to step up from a small start to, uh, to a transplant into one like that. Here's another one that I can sometimes use. Uh, I don't use this one very often. It's a pretty deep one, pretty big, takes quite a bit of seed starting mix, but I can take a very small leggy um, seedling, put it in here, get it going, and it'll develop a good root system. This plant here, this um, planter right here, this is one of my favorite sizes uh, to transplant in. It's, uh, it's about a six inch cup. I get these at um, zenhydro.com. You can also get these at Greenhouse Megastore. I go for the six inch or the five inch. Either one will work just fine. Um, for my lettuces, I'll take a transplant for my leaf lettuce. It'll come out of a, a little cup like this. I'll go straight into here and it spends its entire life cycle in that, okay? Now, if I'm going to uh, be growing some stuff in the, uh, in the fall, I get a lot of brassica that I try to work with. And I have found that on some of these brassicas, they are heavy feeders and they are a little bit slow to grow to get started, and especially when I'm trying to get them started out in the fall. And what will happen down here in Florida is I'll get my seeds started and they'll be in a small tray and then it just won't seem to cool down as fast as I want it to. It, the, the high temperatures linger, the ground temperatures hot, and it's just not cooling down good. So I can't, I have a very hard time taking a small seedling or this size of a seedling and going and directly planting it in the earth bed. Um, I don't have too much trouble when I put it in a container. It seems to do pretty good. But if I'm going into the earth bed from a seed seedling this size, a brassica, 
broccoli, cauliflower, things like that. Um, I will step that up into a, a container this big and at that point I will add some nutrients into with the soil. I won't use seed starting mix when I do it. I will use my plain old container mix that I always use. We have a video on our channel on how to make that mix at home. You can do that yourself. And that's what I'll use. I'll put it in here and I'll supplement or amend this soil with bone meal and blood meal for this transplant. I like to put the blood meal, in, I mean the bone meal in there because it's gonna promote, um, that phosphorus will promote root growth and that's what I'm trying to get, a robust root system in this larger um, container. I add the uh, blood meal in here to give it a boost of nitrogen which is gonna push the foliage and if I have the root system um, getting a jump start and the foliage getting a jump start, that plant is going to take up that, um, that uh, meal uh, enough to get that plant to get very good, uh, big, very quick in a small container. A lot of folks are going to say, well, you know, the bone meal and the blood meal are all slow release. It takes four months for the soil to completely incorporate that, that uh, phosphorus and that nitrogen into the soil. That's absolutely true. When I put the blood meal and the bone meal in here and I put the plant in and I add a little bit of water, I'm going to get maybe about a three to six percent release of the bone um, phosphorus or the blood nitrogen immediately. The rest of it is going to take a long period of time to incorporate and break down and break down and incorporate into the soil where the plant can take it up. So that that um, slow release mix is in that container with the plant. And when that seedling gets on up and it's got a nice big root system, when I go over to transplant this potted up, stepped up plant into the earth bed, when I pull it out, it still has the root system and all of the soil that was in here still intact, which means when I put it into the ground, all that blood meal and bone meal that I put in there when I stepped it up is still with the plant. It's still with the roots. So when I get them over there and I build them in my bed, you'll see me, I will often dig a big hole. I put fish in the hole and I put more blood meal and more uh, um, uh, bone meal and blood meal in the hole with it and when I put the seed when I transplant this new potted up plant in the hole um, with what it's already got in the soil it's gonna you know explode and it goes 10 times faster than if I'd have taken this out there and put it in the, in the ground and tried to get this going out there uh, just directly into the earth bed right here it's contained uh, contained condensed it's um, the roots are uh, close together in with the uh, uh, nutrients, which gives it a, a robust growing system on the roots quickly instead of trying to really compete with everything that's already over there in that soil. Um, this way it's, it's like um, a steroid sort of. So it grows quick in the pot and then when I plant it, I have a very high success rate and a healthy plant when I uh, put it over there. So that's um, a little bit about how I do this. Um, another um, benefit of transplanting the, the plants that I'm going to be putting over there, when I put it and step it up into a plant like this, a pot like this, there's one right there that I'm going to be saving. I'll take these after I get them uh, transplanted and I'll put them over on a um, grow table that I have over here on the side of the of garden. Now the reason that I can do this, this allows me to move them around to adjust to temperature and uh, weather conditions until I'm ready to put it into the ground because once it goes in the ground that's it. So when I get it over here on this pallet, this little grow out table, grow out pallet, this works out perfect for me and, and this is what you want to do. You want to look for an area, especially in the fall if you're experiencing high temperatures and you've had to step your plant up until you can get a robust root system until you're ready to transplant it. If you will um, find an area in your yard that has direct morning sun, direct noon sun, and then 
afternoon shade. In my case over here, where I'm gonna be putting it, I have very tall pine trees back here behind me on the west side of me. So when that sun starts sinking down in the west and setting, it casts a shadow on the table. So it's, it's um, subjected to direct morning sun, noon sun, and um, pretty much full shade in the afternoon, which completely protects it from being overheated because the overheating occurs in the afternoons where it's just hot and they don't need any more sun. They've had so much sun during the day eight, nine hours worth of sun, that last bit of sun that you get in the afternoon is just heating up the temperature of the soil, it's drying it out, it's evaporating all your moisture out, the, the leaves are uh, going through a stress, so you're subjecting it to heat stress and root stress from being hot soil. So um, look for a place where you can uh, let your plant experience direct morning, noon sun, and shade in the afternoon. This also allows you to come out and check it off and it's easy to water. I can water with a wand with these in a dense pack sitting on the, um, on the grow table and uh, it, it gets it quickly. I can do it twice a day if I really need to. So I can come out and check my leaves and if I'm showing wilt, then I'll lightly water it again just to keep it going until I can transplant. So let me transplant one of these and just show you uh, how I transplant one of these plants. Uh, you've probably seen me do this a million times, but I figured you'd just want to go through one while we're here. Come on up here. Okay, here we go. I'm going to use this, this pot right here. Let me add some um, container soil to this and uh, fill it up with that. There we go. I just level it off to the top like that. I do not pre-moisten this. I leave it dry because it's a little easier to work with when I transplant. So I take this and I'll dig my hole like I always do. And I go a little bit down in there about the tip of my middle finger to the center of my palm. That always seems to work out just about perfect for me. Now here's some seedlings that are leggy. Okay, so let's take one. Straight out of here. And you can see that it hasn't really developed a very good root system yet. It's small and young, but it's coming out leggy. So by doing what I'm doing now, this gives me a little bit more time to um, develop a good root system. Next thing I do is I add about a tablespoon of bone meal straight in the hole and a tablespoon of blood meal straight in the hole. Then I take the plant, I put it down a little bit deep, collapse the sides around there, and now I've got that leggy stem supported a little bit better. I pack it down so it's kind of snug in there because I don't want it to just flop right back over. Okay, once I get it packed down, I grab a little bit of extra soil. And I put that right around the plant. Now the plant's very supported. It's got nutrients and a bigger pot, so I can give it a little bit more water. And it's ready to go to the grow table just like that. Okay. Let's go check it out at the grow table. Okay. Here's our little grow table that I made out of a couple of pallets and it's uh, nothing to it, very simple. Nothing fancy. Um, I put these on here and I space them out where I have plenty of room in between these seedlings so I can expect these seedlings to cascade out and mature pretty big. So I can get these up at a good healthy size before I go transplant them over in the, directly out into the earth bed. And that doesn't take very long. It'll only take about two or three weeks from here and these will be uh, ready to go. So I water it with my watering wand. I 
most of the time I can get it done once in the morning and it holds until the next day with really no problem with the larger container and the the shade from the uh, pine trees behind me in the afternoon helps me keep that water moisture uh, level in there pretty consistent so this is the way I do it we'll be back in uh, let's let's come back in two or three weeks whenever this is ready to transplant and I'll We'll pull some of them out of here so you can see the uh, root system that has developed in these small plants and um, you'll see what I'm talking about. So we'll be back in a couple, three weeks. Well, welcome back, friends. It's been a couple of weeks since we uh, stepped our uh, little cabbage seedlings here up into these larger containers, and today is, uh, they look like they're ready to go, so I'm gonna be planting those out in the earth bed, but I remember I promised you that I wanted to show you the, uh, the root system that developed on these after we stepped them up and how robust they are. So let me grab this one right here. I take it right out of the cup. Let me see if I can show you that. You can see that the root system is all the way down through the through the uh, the container very well. The roots themselves are nice and healthy, nice and big, nice and vigorous, growing well. So when I take that over there and put it in the earth bed today, that thing will just transplant so easy with very little root shock because the root system is so much more robust than if it was just a little tiny seedling. So um, stepping them up like that gives them a nice big healthy plant when I put it over in the earth bed and get them off and running. So I thank you for watching. I hope stepping up the seedling video helped you a little bit in your brassicas this year in your fall garden. So until me and Nancy see you next time, always remember, by his hands we are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. Have a blessed day.